Chapter 11, Section 3. Why is natural law authoritarian? Rights, far from being fixed, are the product of social evolution and human action, thought, and emotions. What is acceptable now may become unacceptable in the future. Slavery, for example, was long considered natural. In fact, John Locke, the father of natural rights, was heavily involved in the slave trade. He made a fortune in violating what is today regarded as basic human rights, not to be enslaved. Many in Locke's day claimed that slavery was a natural law. Few say, a uh, few would so say now. Although, so called anarcho capitalists might. Thomas Jefferson indicates exactly why natural law is authoritarian when he wrote Some men look at constitutions with sanctimonious reverence and deem them like the Ark of the Covenant, too sacred to be touched. They ascribe to the men of the preceding age a wisdom more than human, and suppose what they did to be beyond amendment. Laws and institutions must go hand in hand with the progress of human mind. As that becomes more developed, more enlightened, as new discoveries are made, institutions must also advance to keep pace with the times. We might as well require a man to wear still the coat which fitted him when a boy, uh, when a boy as civilized society to remain forever under the reg uh, regimen of their barbarous ancestors. The natural law cult desires to stop the evolutionary process by which new rights are recognized. Instead, they wish to fix social life into what they think is good and right, using a form of argument that tries to raise their ideology above critique or thought. Such a wish is opposed to the fundamental features of liberty, the ability to think for oneself. Nikhail Bakunin writes, The liberty of man consists solely in this, that he obeys natural laws because he has himself recognized them as such, and not because they have been externally imposed upon him by any extrinsic, well, whatever, divine or human, collective or individual. Bakunin on Anarchism, page 227. <clears throat> Thus, anarchism, in contrast to the natural law cult recognizes that natural laws like society are the product of individual evaluation of reality and social life and are therefore subject to change in the light of new information and ideas. Society progresses slowly through the moving power of individual initiative. Again, Bakunin, but philosophical, uh, the political philosophy of Bakunin, page 166. And so obviously do social rights and customs Ethical or moral laws, which is what the natural law cult is actually about, is not a product of human nature or abstract individuals. Rather, it is a social fact, a creation of society and human interaction. In also Bakunin's words, moral law is not an individual but a social fact, a creation of society, and any natural laws are inherent in the social body. And so we must, uh, we must add not floating abstractions existing in man's nature. The case for liberty in a free society is based on the argument that since every individual is unique, everyone can contribute something that no one else has noticed or thought about. It is the free interaction of individuals which allows them, along with society and its customs and rights, to evolve, change, develop. Natural law, like the state, tries to arrest this evolution. It replaces creative inquiry with dogma, making people subject to yet another god. Destroying critical thought with a new rule book. In addition, if these natural laws are really what they claim to be, they're, they are, well, necessarily applicable to all of humanity. Rothbard explicitly acknowledges this when he wrote that one of the notable attributes of natural law is its applicability to all men regardless of time or place. The Ethics of Liberty, page 42. In other words... Every other law code must, by definition, be against nature, and there exists one way of life, the natural one. The authoritarian implications of such arrogance is clear, that the dogma of natural law was only invented a few hundred years ago in one part of the planet does not seem to bother its advocates, nor does the fact that for the vast majority of human existence people have lived in societies which violated almost all 
all of their so-called natural laws. To take one example, before the late Neolithic, most societies were based on usufruct, uh, or free access to commonly held land and other resources. See Murray Bookchin on the ecology of freedom. Thus, for millennia, all human beings lived in violation of the supposed natural law of private property, perhaps the chief law of the libertarian universe. If natural law did exist, then all people would have discovered these true laws years ago. To the contrary, however, the debate is still going on with, for example, fascists and libertarians, each claiming the laws of nature and social uh, sociobiology as, well, their own. <laughs>